does my cabinet feel so empty? What does it need? I think I know. A countertop with butcher block. Hit it with the water locks. You watch the color pop, pop, pop. Watch the color pop. It's a countertop with butcher block. You hit it with the water locks. You watch it pop, pop, pop. Get your popcorn ready, cause it's episode 13. Here we go. Right across this country into this starlight. 12,000 miles, turn back, do it again. No destination, it's just a journey. Episode 13, we are making the Butcher Block countertops, finishing up the closet that we framed out last week, and also making the final drawers for the little cabinet underneath the heater. That is a lot of projects this week, so let's get right into it. First up is the Butcher Block countertop. Now, if you followed our shuttle bus build last summer, we are not really making many changes here from the way that we did that Butcher Block countertop and even from our bus before that. We're still using all the same products, but we're gonna walk you through the process that we did for this one. Many episodes back, I welded the lower kitchen cabinet out of three quarter inch steel angle. That was all finished up, the drawers were in place, this cabinet was pretty much finished, but the last step here was to get the butcher block on top of the cabinet, and that's where it really all comes together. I started by measuring out my cabinet and figuring out where I'm gonna split the butcher block. I'm not doing one large piece like we did in the last bus because the countertop doesn't continue. It's split up by a few different pieces like our inset knife block. So it wasn't quite as crazy as doing one big cut, but it is still nerve wracking because you're cutting into this really expensive, really nice piece of wood that we ordered, got shipped to us. You don't wanna make a wrong measurement or a wrong cut here. We unpacked the countertop and this year we went with an unfinished ash butcher block. I'm not making this butcher block, we're just ordering a big slab of it and cutting it to size. When cutting the different parts of this butcher block countertop, we will end up using pretty much every saw we have. So you're gonna use your skill saw, table saw for smaller parts, jigsaw, router to get the corners. I wish we had some sort of special saw that could do it all at once. But you end up having to use lots of tools. Maybe if I got good with the chisel, I could just chisel it all. That would be impressive. It all comes back to the chisel. Once we had all the pieces cut to size, we made the spaces for the sink, for our window planter box, all the different pieces were in place. We did a test fit because you don't want to start sanding and sealing something that isn't perfect. So we brought it into the unicell, set it in place, made sure that especially the sink cutout was perfect because this can be a really tricky cut to make just because of all the measurements and the sink is curved. So it can be a little bit difficult, but it ended up working out really well for us here. We did the test fit, everything looked good. So we could move on to sanding and sanding and more sanding. Preparing a butcher block to actually be sealed and installed just requires so much sanding. I start with 80 grit and that's where I shape the countertop, smooth down the edges and the corners, make sure it looks really nice. Then I move to 150 and that's where you're really smoothing out the texture of the wood. And then finally I finish with 220 grit and this makes the wood so soft. When you step down the sanding like this from 80 to 150 to 220, the wood is one of the softest things I've ever felt in my life. I love this step. Yeah, this is definitely one of those projects that if you don't already have fresh saw blades and tons of sandpaper, it's time to go buy that because this is 
very thick wood. It's gonna wear out those blades and you're gonna be sanding a lot. So make sure you have all that stuff ready or it's time to have a reason to go buy brand new blades and tons of sandpaper. Now we did end up going with a sink cover this time. In our bus, we have a sink cover. The one we did last summer does not. And then we included one this time. We've really gone back and forth on whether we like having this sink cover or not. Half the time we think it's really annoying and it floats mm -hmm. around our bus. And then the other half of the time, it's kind of nice to have. But with the butcher block this year, the cutout was really, really nice. And I was able to sand it really quick and really easy and it just fit there. It looked good. It was grain matched. So I decided to keep it, but we really do go back and yeah. forth. Once all of the cuts have been made and all of the sanding is finally done, that wood is very smooth. It's time to apply a sealant. We've gone with water locks in the past and we went with it again. We really like this product. It's held up well. It seals the wood, but also I particularly like the color it brings out of the wood. It gives it a glossy finish and really gives that wood the kind of the color and lets it show off a little bit under the lights. So we really like this product and we went with it again. Waterlocks does turn the wood this kind of yellowish amber color. And for us, that's worked really well in all of our color schemes. And it set off the color of our cabinets from the green and the blues and the teal that we now have. It's worked really well. We love waterlocks. We've had it in all of our buses. It's held up well in our own over the last two years. So we really saw no reason to change this. We did four coats of waterlocks, each 20 24 hours apart, sanding by hand with the 220 grit in between each coat. All in all, I think we we're working on this butcher block countertop almost a week. Almost a week of cutting and sanding and sealing and just making sure that it's perfect. But doing these coats of water locks 24 hours apart that takes some time. Overall, it's pretty simple and it seals your butcher block. It brings out the color and it looks really beautiful in the end. Before the butcher block could actually be installed, we had to make sure that everything underneath the kitchen cabinet was fully in place. Because once you put the top of this cabinet on, you can't really access everything underneath as well as you can before that countertop goes on. So the last piece of this puzzle was to install our pullout cutting board. We used two pieces of aluminum angle to make little brackets for this cutting board. I bought a new cutting board, cut it down to size, sanded everything, and then made a face and routed out a little handle onto the back of it. This is a nice little hardware free handle for this cutting board. You're not adding another handle to the front of the kitchen cabinet. It's kind of all in one. What if we're all part of a bigger plan? Would that explain why? Explain why you left me. We attached the face to the cutting board and slid it in place. It's now supported by those angles that are mounted to the frame, so it has its own little slot in the cabinet now. The last thing to go in place was the sink. Now, this is the first time we've built this cabinet out of metal, so we made sure to include some rubber strips that we glued into place. So the sink is actually resting on those and not rattling against the metal. In the past, this whole thing's been made out of wood, so that was less of a concern. But with the metal, we thought we probably wanna put something in there as a barrier. So some rubber strips, and that'll kind of hold the sink in place as well as the countertop on top of it, compressing it down. The final step to prep for the countertop to go in was to drill holes into the metal angle that the cabinet is made from. When this cabinet was made out of wood, it was really easy to just drill up through those wood supports right into the countertop and it was secured. But this time it was a little bit more challenging because we didn't have those pieces to screw through. So we pre-drilled holes all around the top of the cabinet so that once the countertop is in, we can just screw right through the holes up 
into the countertop and it'll be held in place that way. We then screwed the backsplash in place. This is cut up into different sections just because of how the countertop is set up. We also have the little window garden that we always do. So this was in little pieces and we had to get each one secured to the back of the countertop. Once that was finished, it was time actually get the countertop into place after a week of prepping and cutting and sanding and sealing it is a whole journey but it was time to finally put it in place we spread some adhesive onto the top of the cabinet and pressed one of the pieces of the countertop in place moved it around until it was exactly where we wanted it, got underneath the cabinet, drilled up through those holes that we had made previously with a little pilot hole into the wood, and then put a screw right up through into the butcher block. Now keep in mind during this process, you're also using adhesive, so we want to really compress this thing down. You're going to need a weight, probably 220 pounds or more would be good. <laughs> You know, maybe 225, 230, depending on what you have available. And you're gonna put <laughs> you're gonna wanna place that weight right on top of the counter once you have it in place so it can't move from vibration as you're screwing up through the bottom. Is that you? All we had on hand was me for that weight. So uh, <laughs> I climbed up there kind of like a dog. We should just put Mateo up there, but he's only 10 pounds. And then you just have somebody climb underneath and screw into the wood and there you go. When I was coming to the top. No, no what? I'm just kidding. <laughs> oh my god, I hate you! I hate you so much! <laughs> I couldn't waste that one. Uh, you didn't measure it beforehand, right? <laughs> I'm literally sweating. <laughs> oh my god, you're such a jerk! <laughs> Because the, the like a little longer ones are in the same package as these ones and I thought that I got them mixed up or something and didn't realize, oh my god. Let's put potato up here. I'm standing like a dog anyways. You're the worst. Once the left side of the countertop was in place, it was time to move on to the sink portion of the countertop. This is a little bit different just because you have the sink. We put the adhesive down normally onto the metal, but I used some additional adhesive and sealant that went right around the edge of the sink. So once you press it down in place, it's sealed all underneath the countertop as well as in that seam. Positioned this piece in place, drilled the pilot holes, put screws up into the countertop, and it was officially finished. There's also two pieces to this countertop that go right behind the stove. One of them is a little door that you'll be able to lift up and access a small storage compartment underneath. And then to the right of that is our inset knife block. There's also a few holes for things like the hone to sharpen the knives. And there's also one that's big enough for maybe a pair of scissors or a cooking spoon. So it's a pretty versatile little section of the countertop. We used a 
similar process for the countertop underneath the heater. I ran a support along the wall and then spacers in between the booth and the wall. So we have something to put the adhesive on and also screw through to attach the countertop right to that structure. The countertop did bump into some of my window framing. So Drew had to come in with a multi-tool and cut out a small little section of that window frame so that it slides all the way back against the wall. But once that was done, it was a space made especially for that countertop and it looked really nice. Both this countertop and the small little countertop that goes next to the bed on the top of the other booth are not gonna be secured into place right this moment. We have a lot of work to do around them and underneath them in the cabinets and the booth ends. So we're not gonna glue them down and screw them in place quite yet, but that'll be coming up in the future when we finish all the projects that surround them. With the countertop installation now complete, that kitchen is really coming together. In every build that we've done, every time we install the countertop, it really feels like this milestone step. It really is one of those centerpiece features of the build. Now the real challenge begins. Protect the countertop for the rest of the build. Yes. You're gonna wanna immediately get cardboard on that. And the hard part is you're not gonna see that countertop for probably another couple months now. <laughs> So last week we constructed the bed frame and the closet out of this metal framing. Now it was time to give it a really nice face with some wood so it didn't look like this weird metal skeleton anymore. We started by lining the back of the closet with the cedar ends that we had from doing the ceiling. This was the perfect way to use all those scrap pieces that we had sitting around and it was actually the perfect amount. I didn't have any cedar left over after doing this and now the closet is already lined once we build all the shelves in it. We added plywood pieces to the end of the closet, the bottom, and the side that faces the kitchen. Just skinning the outside of this cabinet already makes it look so much better. You're boxing in all that metal and it's starting to look really nice. I then added the framing for the bottom of the closet. This is the portion that will be below the mattress level. And we like to make this into its own compartment with a little door on the top so that in the end, when you're sitting on the mattress, you can open this door and kind of reach down in. On our closets, we like to do sliding bypass doors. We really like this, even though sometimes it can be a little bit annoying to get them in place and make sure that they slide correctly. We like this style because if we had closet doors that opened outward, they might catch on your bedding or different things you have on your bed. And so we like these bypass doors because they just stay out of the way completely and inside of the closet. So we installed the upper track for the sliding bypass doors so that once I make those doors and install the little brackets on them, they can just set right into place. The next big part of this closet was to make two drawers, one for each side of the closet. In our bus, the drawer on my side of the closet acts as a vanity, and this is one of my favorite features. I use it every day to get ready or straighten my hair, put makeup on, anything that I need to do, that mirror is right there on the bottom of the drawer lid. So I just pull it out, open it up, and you have a full vanity. With how much I love this feature of our bus, definitely had to include it here as well. Both drawers fit right into these little compartments that I made in the middle section of the closet. They'll get little drawer slides so they can pull out. And I actually had an extra mirror sitting around from when we did our own bus. So I glued that right onto the lid of the drawer and it's all set to go now. 
Yeah, these are really useful for any smaller items that you need to store in your closet that aren't floating around. You can always get a bin that works as well, but it is really nice to have a drawer you can put sort of smaller things in. How you gonna make up? The last piece of this closet puzzle was the plywood face. I decided to make this all one piece, so I just did a cutout for the opening of the front of the closet. Lots of sanding here, lots of perfecting all the edges, and I'm actually really, really happy with how this face turned out. Doesn't solve your problems. Doesn't make it all. The corners are really nice. The top is curved and the bottom is more square. I'm really happy with it. By this point, the closet was really coming together. It's starting to take its final form, but just the nature of how it was constructed left a bit of a gap on each end of the closet. Now on the side that faces the kitchen, that's gonna house wires for all the switches and the outlet that's on that panel. But on the right side of the closet, the side that faces out when you open those big swinging doors, there was just dead space in that closet and it was absolutely killing me. We decided to use that dead space and I took the face of that side of the closet off and cut out a compartment into it. Now this is a shallow kind of smaller space, but it is still empty space that can be used. Since this can only be accessed when the door is open, we figured outdoor storage of some sort. You can see here, we've kind of modeled a few disc golf discs in there. It was Fits discs perfectly. sort of the perfect size, but we may add some sort of hooks or webbing or something in the future. You can either put like a shovel or an ax, things like that that you need for outside that you don't always have to get at. This is a great little compartment to store anything along those lines. The closet is finished. It's done, it has drawers, it has storage, it has faces. We're really happy with all the storage that it adds and all the little compartments that it has. Yeah, this is one of the last big things that sort of shapes out the real whole layout of the build. After this, pretty much what you're seeing now is roughly what it's going to look like. There's not gonna be any other big furniture installed or anything like that. What sticks out to me about this closet is how huge the top of the closet is. In our buses, the wall curves, so inevitably the bottom would be bigger and it would taper at the top. Because of the unicell being square at the top, there's so much storage. You can really feel it when you're in the space. Overall, really happy with how this closet turned out and how it shapes that bed space. Now that we had the countertop on underneath the heater, I was inspired to finish up this area. And the last piece of that part was to make the drawers that will go underneath that section. This is a great area for storage. And I decided on three drawers that will just stack on top of each other. I made these drawers exactly how I've made my other drawers with the pocket holes glued and screwed them together. So let's just montage through this process. <laughs> Lots of cutting and assembling, sanding, sealed them up with Danish oil. So let's fly through that whole process. i
The drawers were now in place and they were all settled into their slides. The last part was just to face each drawer with a nice front that had been painted teal to match the rest of the cabinets. Now that this whole section is finished, we will go on to install that countertop down the line after we have the propane in place for the heater. And really this small corner of the unicell is pretty much in place. That finishes episode 13. We got the counter installed. We've got the closet now built and installed, plus the drawers in really kind of filled in any of the empty spaces and the whole shape and layout is finally coming together from here it's just going to be a lot of finishing work to really make it look nice a woodworking centric episode this week we love to see it thank you guys for being here with us and we will see you next week